Sonic the Hedgehog by Archie Comics. I've heard about it and if you're watching this video, you've heard about it too. Remember when Tails became the chosen one and got really buff? Or do you remember an evil different dimension Sonic called Scourge? I didn't, because I haven't actually read Archie Sonic. But I've heard a lot about it. I've always wanted to hear a recap of the events that happened in the comics, but I never found a really good channel for that. So I thought, hey, maybe I should do one. But enough dilly-dallying and let's jump right into the story. That's why you're here. We start our story by seeing Sonic being chased by Dr. Eggman, who's called Dr. Robotnik here. We learn from the narration that Dr. Robotnik has taken over the world of Mobius. And now, a band of heroes called the Freedom Fighters are trying to defeat him. As the chase continues between the two, we see that Robotnik has a hard time catching Sonic. Eventually, Sonic is flanked by Robotnik and one of his robots, Caterkiller. As Sonic is pinned by the two, Robotnik demands to know where the Freedom Fighters hideout Not Whole Village is. Of course, Sonic doesn't tell them a thing, instead just runs through the two. Satisfied, after messing with Robotnik for a bit, Sonic heads back to Not Whole Village. The village is located beneath a forest called the Great Forest. To get to it, you have to go through a secret entrance, which is a tree stump. When Sonic arrives to Not Whole, we get to see the other Freedom Fighters for the first time. The members are, alongside with Sonic, Tails, Boomer, Sally, and Antoine. Sally looks really different here compared to how she looks in Sonic Sad AM. That's because this design was an earlier beta design for the show. The design evolved a bit in the Sad AM's pilot, and then we got the iconic design we all know in the main show. As Sonic is about to brag of his battle with Robotnik, Sally points out that Robotnik could have followed Sonic back by tracking his footsteps. Sonic says that he ran at warp Sonic speed, which means that he was going so fast that his feet weren't even touching the ground. I wonder if that explanation was a throwaway line, or if we're going to find out what the other speed levels are about. We find out that there's some romantic tension between Sonic and Sally. When Tails said he has been practicing warp sonic speed, but as he's trying to show off, he trips on a rock. This causes Sally to comment on how Tails looks up to Sonic, like they all do. Sally then quickly backpedals after realizing she included herself. We then meet Antoine, who has an urgent announcement. It seems that there's a leak in Nuthole. This is bad because this means they could be flooded out. There's also another thing that could happen. Robotnik could use something called trickle-down technology to locate Nuthole Village. Yeah, Robotnik has some method of detecting leaks from afar. I mean, if he has a technology like that, I'm surprised he hasn't just one already. I guess he has one already. Now we head back to Dr. Robotnik, who's sitting at a chair, ranting about defeating Sonic once and for all. The problem is that he can't figure out where their village is. Crabmate, the robot crab, says that Robotnik's spy satellites are picking up something. Robotnik guesses that it must be the Freedom Fighters, and he's right. The Freedom Fighters are looking for the source of the leak. Sonic warns the others that they might be getting too close and Robotnik's spy satellites might locate them. Tails volunteers to check it out, but is stopped by Antoine, who says only a great warrior such as himself should go. Sonic, who noticed something Antoine didn't, says go ahead. As Antoine confidently walks forward, he falls into a puddle. It seems that the reason for the leak was... Crying willow trees. Man, this world is weird. Apparently, Robotnik has been deforesting the Great Forest to possibly find Nothole, I assume? Or he's just evil and just likes to cause mayhem. Sonic has an idea on how to fix the situation. But before he could say anything, they are attacked by Dr. Robotnik. The Freedom Fighters spread out. Unfortunately, Robotnik decides to attack Sonic's friends instead of him. Robotnik swings around his signature wrecking ball. Sonic tries to get Robotnik to chase him instead by calling him a chicken. I guess it's really easy to go under Robotnik's skin, isn't it? 
Sonic runs up a hill towards a well, as he's chased by Robotnik. In the well, Sonic hid one of his magic rings. He uses the ring to either become invulnerable or gain super strength, as he smacks the wrecking ball back at Robotnik. After a terrible loss, Robotnik retreats. The Freedom Fighters head back to the willow trees and use Sonic's idea. They plant new willow trees near the crying ones, which leads them to stop crying. I'll be honest, I don't have much to say about this story. It's a basic Saturday morning cartoon episode. I don't think it's bad actually. I think the story is well written. As someone who hasn't watched a lot of Sonic media, I got good gist of the characters. But of course, when this series gets more complicated and a bit more crazier, then I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of things to say about it. Now for the second story. Interestingly enough, the second story is an origin story. I wonder why they did that. I wonder why it's the second story instead of being the first one. I suppose this way they don't have to introduce everyone as strangers. Well, well then, let's see how Dr. Robotnik took over Mobius. We see a chili dog stand manned by an older looking Sonic. This isn't Sonic, but actually it's Uncle Chuck. He runs a chili dog stand and also is a great inventor. He's Sonic's uncle. Sonic zooms in while breaking the land speed record. Iconic Sonic shoes were made by Chuck, who was always losing a lot of money because Sonic kept breaking his shoes. Chuck gets an order of hundreds of chili dogs, which makes both Chuck and Sonic ecstatic. Because they're going to be rich. Once the chili dogs are made, Sonic zooms out with them to deliver the order. As Chuck admires Sonic from afar, he's arrested by SWAT bots. Because he was smiling and indicating enjoyment, which is illegal. By whose authority? Well, that would be the one who took over Mobius just now, Dr. Robotnik. When Sonic eventually finds his way to the location of the order, he's surprised by these new factories that keep popping all over the place. Regardless, he tries to deliver the chili dogs, but he gets a door slammed in front of his face and a wrecking ball is dropped on top of him. Luckily, he's fast enough to avoid it. Worried about Uncle Chuck, Sonic speeds back to him. He's horrified to see SWAT bots dismantling Uncle Chuck's stand. Sonic demands to know what happened to him, but the SWAT bots won't answer, but instead try to kill him. Why? Because he's being violent. This doesn't go too well for them, as Sonic dismantles them on the spot. Sonic finds out that SWAT bots were created by Robotnik Inc., which was located at the factory he was at. Sonic runs back, but before he could go any further, he's stopped by Sally, who explains that she's a princess and her father was also captured by Robotnik. Sonic doesn't believe her and tries to go off. Sally tackles him. Why? Well, that's because the area is patrolled by Buzz Bombers, and Sonic at this point can't defeat all of them. Sally says that she knows a shortcut, and asks if Sonic can keep up with her. Sonic says that Speed is his middle name. Well, actually, it's Maurice, but he says not to tell anyone. <laughs> yeah, okay. So Sonic's full name is Sonic Maurice the Hedgehog. When Sonic and Sally arrive, they see Robotnik has turned the captives into robots to work in his factories. It's too late to change them back. Regardless, Sonic runs and tries to save Uncle Chuck, but to no avail. While Sonic was distracted, Robotnik captured Sally and called the SWAT bots to capture Sonic. This doesn't work because Sonic starts running in circles so fast that it creates a tornado which blows the SWAT bots away. Sonic then grabs Sally and they retreat. As Sonic is running, Sally asks him to run towards the Great Forest because her group of freedom fighters are situated there. She also asks Sonic if she wants to join. And after everything that happened, he has all of the reasons to join, so he does. I have to say I really like this origin story. I actually kinda hope it was the first story as it's stronger. Originally I read the main series Archie Sonic first, thinking that's where everything started, before realizing there's a miniseries. And I have to say, I really, really like this issue more than the first main series issue, which we'll find out later on. Honestly, I love how Sonic was characterized here. 
I expected him to be a type of person who's like overconfident, which he is to a point. But for example, we actually find out at least in the last scene, the reason Sonic retreated with Sally is that he said, the one who runs away can fight another day, which is not something I was expecting Sonic the Hedgehog to say, but that actually makes him way more interesting. And because of the popularity of Archie Sonic, even though it's still at this point, at the first issue, like a Saturday morning cartoon, I'm assuming later on it will get better and I'll get more into it. And probably we'll have a lot more to say about it. Also, I apologize if this kind of feels badly done. I'm, I'm, this is my first video ever. And I hope you can kind of comment down below and give, give some feedback. Am I glossing over details too fast? Or do you like the pace of me recapping these stories? Do you want me to comment more about scenes? Or is it good enough? Well, thank you for watching and see you next time.